The diagram below shows the graph of f of x, okay, so that's the parabola, and g of x, which is a exponential. Uh, let's just see if there's anything important here. a and b are the x-intercepts. Duh. e is the y-intercept, obviously. Uh, c is the point minus 3 over 4 and y. Okay, I hope that that's clear for all of you. So that's um, minus 3 over 4 and y. And then y equals to minus 8 is the asymptote. Okay, so that's over here. We've got y equals to minus 8. Okay, so that helps us with the exponential asymptote. That's nice. Um, h, which is 1 and minus 5, is the point of intersection. Okay. First question for one mark, write down the coordinates of D. All right, so we know that D over here is part of the exponential. So what we do is we take that exponential. Okay, now because the asymptote is at minus eight, that's your Q value. That is your Q value. Okay, now you just, to find a Y intercept, you just make X zero. So you're just gonna go make X zero. Now remember with an exponential, something to the power of zero is one. So therefore y is going to be one minus eight, which is minus seven. So the coordinates of d don't just say minus seven, say x is zero and y is minus seven. Write down the value of q. Oh, okay, so we were supposed to be able to get 5.1 without, without knowing q. Okay, I'll ignore that to be honest. I wouldn't worry too much about that. So the value of q is minus eight. Next question, find the value of A, B, and C. Okay. Now this is a nice question because normally it's usually pretty straightforward. They would usually give us the turning point and then we could use the turning point formula or they would give us the two x-intercepts and then we could use the x-intercept method. But in this question, they haven't given us any of that. Guys, I'll be honest. I've been sitting here for about five minutes now and I just cannot figure this one out. And then I realized these Bs are the same. <laughs> so those Bs are already the same. So we can use this graph to work out that B over there. Yo, that was good. So let's quickly go work that out. So what we can do is we can take this equation now, um, which is G of X equals B to the power of X minus eight. Because remember we found out that Q is minus eight. Then we can just substitute a random point on that graph. So the y value is minus five, the x value is one, like that. And so if we had to work out b, we would end up getting b as three. There we go, so now we have b as three on the parabola as well. Okay, that, that got me. Um, if it got you two, high five. Um, I just didn't see that, oh, the b's are the same. So now what we can do, um, it's still quite a very, it's still a very good question though, but what we could do now is they tell us that the x value of the turning point um, is minus three over four. How do we normally find the x value of a turning point on a parabola? Well, it's normally minus b over two a, right? So we know the x value is minus three over four, and we know the value of b is three, and so now we can just work out a. So what I'll do is I'll just get rid of the negatives because they're on both sides. So we have 3 over 4 now equals to 3 over 2a. And then you can solve this in as many different ways, or well, there's many different ways of solving this. So I'm just going to bring it over here. And so there are multiple ways you can solve this, but I'm going to use cross multiplication. So 6a equals 12. And so you should eventually get that a is 2. Okay, so we have A, we have B. Now we just need to find C, but that won't be difficult to do. So I'm gonna take this equation over here, um, but I'm just gonna say Y equals to um, A, which is two, B, which we said is three, and then I'm gonna say plus C. And then I'm just gonna take this point one and minus five and substitute that into here. So we're gonna say minus five equals to two, and then X is one, and so minus five is equal to two plus three plus C. And so if you had to get C by itself, you should end up getting C as negative 10. Okay, so there we go. So the big trick with this one that might have caught some learners is these B values that are the same. Never seen that before, to be honest. 
Next one, write down the range of G. By the way, these questions are going to carry on, so there are more questions after this. Write down the range of G. So G is the exponential. Okay, well, here's the exponential. So we know that the lowest value, remember range is always the y values, so the lowest value for g is this asymptote over here, which is minus 8, and then the highest value would be infinity. So you could either say y is an element going from, um, so it doesn't touch the minus 8, so we'll use a round bracket up to infinity, or if you prefer to use the other method, you could say y is um, bigger than minus 8. So you could just say like that, y is bigger than minus 8. All right, now here's the next set of questions. Okay, so here we have a 5 marker. So this one says the line with the following equation, whoa, Kevin, with the following equation, is a tangent at point t. Where's point t? Okay, point t is not given to us. Determine the coordinates of t. Okay, so somewhere we have a tangent. Now if we quickly go work this line out, or if we just go rearrange it a little bit, and re rewrite it in standard, like y equals to mx plus c, it's going to be minus 9x minus 28. Okay, so it's got a negative gradient, and it's got a negative y-intercept of 28. So it's cutting the graph, or it's cutting the y-intercept down here at minus 28, um, so it's probably going something like, and it's got a negative gradient, so it's probably looking something like that. Okay, the picture isn't that important, but that's possibly what it looks like. So what we can do, we do know that this tangent is touching this parabola. So to find out where two graphs intersect or where they touch, we normally just make their equations equal to each other, or we do some type of simultaneous equations. So what we can do, let's just go and take that equation that we got for the tangent just now, and then we take the equation of the parabola, which we said earlier was 2x squared plus 3x minus 10. And we're just going to equate these two things to each other, okay? So we're going to have minus 9x minus 28 equals to 2x squared plus 3x minus 10. And now we're just going to solve. So I'm going to take everything to the right-hand side. So we end up with 2x squared plus 12x, because this minus 9 is going to come over and become positive, And it's going to add with this 3x. And then we're going to end up getting plus 18, because this minus 28 is going to come over to the minus 10, and they're going to add. Now you can solve this next part however you want. You can factorize. You can use the quadratic formula. Um, I'm going to factorize. I just don't feel like writing out the quadratic formula right now, but I'm going to divide everything by 2 first. You don't have to do it that way, but that'll give us x squared plus 6x plus 9, and then this one's going to factorize as x plus 3 and another x plus 3. So if you then had to go work out the value of x, you are only going to get one x value, and this makes sense, because if there was two x values, then it means that the graph is no longer a tangent, and it's rather touching the parabola in more than one place. So it would look something like that, where this would be like minus 3, and this would be like positive 2. It makes sense, therefore, that the only answer is a minus 3, and, that, and we don't have like two answers. Okay, so that should make sense. Now we just need to get the y value as well. So to get the y value, you can just plug it into this equation, or if you wanted to, you could plug it into this one. Um, so I'm going to choose this one. It's a little bit quicker, a little bit easier. So it's going to go minus 9 times 3, sorry, minus 3, minus 28. And so that's going to be um, 27 minus 28, which is minus 1. So the y value is minus 1. So if we had to go write out the coordinates, you would put the x value as minus 3 and the y value as minus 1. Next one, 5.6. Given that h of x is equal to g of x plus 8, okay, write down h minus 1. So now some learners look at h minus 1, then they think, ah, oh, first derivative. But no, that's h with a minus 1. So that actually stands for um, inverse. Inverse. If it was first derivative, it would have a little line like that. Okay, so they want the inverse now. So they're telling us that h of x is the same as g of x, and then you must just add 8. So let's quickly go see what h of x is. So it's g of x, which we got earlier as um, 3x minus 8. And then they just want us to add 8. Oh, okay. So h of x is 
3 of x. Now they want the inverse of this. Now this is an exponential, so if you understand inverses quite well, you should know that the inverse should become a log graph. So step one, just write it as y. Then, okay, now that's just the basic starting point. Now step one is actually for inverses. If you haven't watched inverses, go check out the introduction videos on inverses. We've got lots of them. So what you do is you switch x and y around. So y becomes x, x becomes y. So that's step one. Step two, get the y value by itself again. So here's where you're gonna have to use logs. Now, you've obviously got your own way of how you remember logs because logs can be quite weird. But what we should eventually end up with is y equals to log three x. And that is the answer for that one. y equals to log base three, and then there's a x. And the last one, given that p of x is equal to f of x plus one, so let's quickly go fill that in. What's up with these people wanting to plus values onto the graphs the whole time? So let's say p of x is equal to f of x plus one. So that's quite easy. p of x is then gonna be equal to this graph, which is f, which was two x squared plus three x minus 10 from the previous question. And then we're just gonna plus one. So that's gonna give us um, p of x is then equal to two x squared plus three x minus nine. Okay, so it says determine the values of x for which this times this is a negative. Okay, so that times that is a negative. Okay, so what we can do, they want us to say x multiplied by p of x. Okay, so you've some, maybe you've seen one of the questions where I've done this before where I draw like a little table type thing. So I'm gonna go x and then I'm gonna go p of x. And we want that, when you multiply those two together, we want it to be smaller than zero. So we want it to be a negative. The only way that you can get a negative is if this one's negative and this one's positive, or if this one's positive and this one's negative. So then what I do is I just choose um, a specific row. So I'm gonna choose this row over here for now. We'll obviously have to look at the other one. But for now, I'm, I'm looking at that row. So I'm looking at all the x values that are negative. So where is x negative? Well, x negative is all of this in red. That's where x is negative. I mean, this is the x axis. So everything on the left-hand side is where x is negative. So there we go, I've gone and I've done my best to erase the entire right-hand side because we are only looking at the area where x is negative. Now, in that area only, is p of x positive? Well, we know that p of x is the same as the graph of f. It's just moved up by one unit. So it's probably gonna look something like that. Okay, so where is the graph of P positive? Well, remember they're talking about the Y values there, so that would be all of this. See there, P is positive. So the answer, we're obviously gonna have to go work out a few things, but the answer is definitely this little area, or sorry, this, this whole area over here, all of those X values. Okay, or should I rather say all of those X values there. So we're gonna need to go work out this X value over here. So to do that, we just need to find the x-intercepts of this graph. So let's quickly do that. So we just make x zero, I mean, y zero, my bad. Now you can use the quadratic formula here, or you could try to factorize this one using brackets. This one actually, actually does factorize uh, with brackets. So I'm just gonna use that method, but you can use quadratic. And so uh, this is how the brackets would look. And so you would eventually get that x is equal to three over two, or x is equal to negative three. So this x value would be negative three. Okay, so the answer would definitely be to the left of that. So that's our first little answer. So we can say um, x smaller than negative three. Um, if you prefer interval notation, you could say x is an element from negative infinity up to negative three like that. Okay, so we've handled this part. Now we need to go look at this next one. Okay, so now we're looking at this part here. So with this part, it's where x is positive. So we're only looking at the part where x is positive now. Okay, so now I've tried to um, erase all of the left-hand side of the graph. Okay, so now we're looking at where x is positive. So we're only looking on this right-hand side over here, because that's where x is positive. Now in that, we wanna know if p of x is ever negative. Now remember, p of x is the graph of f of x, which is this one here. 
but then gone up, it's gone up by one unit so um it's gone up by one unit so it's probably something like that so okay right so in this area only in this area only why because we said it's where x is positive is the graph of p which is this red one is that ever negative well yes it is negative in this area over here you can see that the y values are all negative in that area over there so we can say that it's where x is between one uh, i mean zero sorry and whatever this x value is over here so in the previous part when we were looking at this part we found the x-intercepts of this red graph, this graph of p, as negative 3 and 3 over 2. So this part here is 3 over 2. So in this little area between 0 and 3 over 2, that red graph is negative, okay, while the x-values are positive. So for that part, we can say um, x is between 0 and 3 over 2. If you prefer interval notation, you would say x is an element going from 0 to 3 over 2. So to summarize the final answer, you will say, because remember this is also part of our answer, so you would either say x is smaller than minus 3 or x is uh, bigger than 0 and smaller than 3 over 2. Those are for people who prefer to use that type of method. And then for those of you that prefer interval notation, you would rather say that x is an element uh, from minus infinity up to minus 3 or from 0 to 3 over 2.